Dear ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to my presentation about integrated robotics and assembly planning at BSH for a higher process efficiency. So um, my name is Frank Alexander Helmke and I'm from Munich in southern Germany. I'm working uh, for BSH Home Appliances and um, actually me and my team, we are responsible for all classical digital factory tools uh, we use for uh, factory layout planning, production process planning, process simulation, logistics simulation, etc. So that's that's what we are doing. And um, today I would like to tell you something about two of the projects we have been recently trying to bring forward. One is focused on classical optimization of manual work um, assembly lines. Um, so for really focusing on uh, on the job our workers at the assembly line have to do and productivity. And uh, the other project is uh, focused on uh, automation, especially robotics, lightweight robots, etc. And uh, actually how we try to bring those um, things closer together. So first of all, um, I will give you some insights into BSH. Um, uh, you might not know the company, but we are one of the biggest home appliance manufacturers in the world. You can see uh, in the picture, um, you can see the kitchen. You all know very well what products we're making because you all have a kitchen at home. You all have a refrigerator. You have a dishwasher and probably a vacuum cleaner as well. And uh, the chances are, I would say, quite high that you even own one of our products as we are um, having several brands under our roof. So we manufacture appliances under the Siemens brand, under the Bosch brand, or even uh, if you're in the United States of America, you might know Thermador brand, so it also belongs to us. And we have several other brands um, that we use um, worldwide. And yeah, so as you can imagine, that brings quite some complexity into our um, factories as well. And uh, yeah, so um, this complexity is actually something that we have to deal with in manufacturing and manufacturing engineering. And um, so I'm convinced that we need um, software to handle that complexity and to be able to really achieve our goals. So maybe one sentence, what does it mean to really manufacture home appliances? So um, there I've been putting some pictures so you get an impression of how a factory looks like from the inside. Uh, we have quite a considerable depth of production. Uh, we do a lot of things. Uh, the big factories really receive the coil only uh, or sheet metal parts. And then we do the whole surface treatment. We have welding processes, riveting um, and surface treatment areas. We have paint shops. We have enameling processes. And we have uh, big, long assembly lines with uh, 30 or 50 stations even in a row where workers really assemble our, uh, the parts to our products until it goes into the packaging area and we ship the, the final product. So we have um, yeah, a variety, high variety of processes, of technologies, and uh, we have a really high number of variant types. So that's the complexity I'm talking about for, for home appliances. And that's what keeps us as manufacturing engineers really busy and uh, is uh, a quite, we have to put some effort to really meet the goals for quality and productivity and, and cost and time, as you can imagine. So yeah, um, so what's the, the job that we're doing about? Yeah, um, so one picture, maybe explaining it all over again, uh, what do I as an industrial engineer, or manufacturing engineer have to do? We follow uh, really closely uh, product development, our colleagues, and we analyze the product, uh, the work content of the product. We define the processes from an early product lifecycle stage, later um, hand over to serial production. And we do even the optimization during the serial production because uh, our major domestic appliances have quite a long product life cycle. So we manufacture uh, one, the platform for refrigerator oven runs uh, several years in our factories. And um, Besides production process planning, of course, we do the layout planning, the investment planning. We um, configure a detailed station layout, a line layout, in order to meet the required output. And so those are the two areas that I see and the synthesis of the process and the uh, layout and resource side. That's the manufacturing concept, and that's actually the goal of our work. Later on, we hand over um, 
the results uh, to ERP SAP system and uh, and to the MES platform, but uh, I will come to that in a minute because that's here now the, from my point of view, most important picture that actually sums up uh, the IT strategy that we have in place for manufacturing engineering. So on the right-hand side, you can see that we have five major applications we are, um, we are having implemented for our um, industrial engineers. <clears throat> and actually, they all have one thing in common. They uh, run entirely integrated or uh, on top of team center manufacturing, or they have at least an interface to team center. So um, I will show you two examples out of those applications. So on the, uh, do you see that's five bubbles around circling around team center? We have one single team center instance in BSH. So we share the same system with product development. That means all product data is inside. And we as industrial engineers can consume that product data and define the processes. So we use uh, on the left hand, you see the um, easy plan uh, web client. That's the one we use uh, now and in the future for uh, the assembly planning, for manual task planning, ergonomics analysis and time analysis. And then below you see, we also have uh, Autodesk uh, attached to Team Center. Um, we can store our 2D layouts, factory layouts there. Then we can open that uh, layout in Annex Line Designer. Annex allows us to um, detail the station layout, the line layout in 3D. And uh, then we can bring this into Process Simulate and Process Simulate we use as the primary tool for robotic simulation and advanced human simulation. So I will show you some examples from Process Simulate later. And we also have plant simulation. And the first interface to Team Center is established. So on the left part of the picture, you see our strategic partners, um, Siemens and Technomatics, and uh, in parallel, some other companies that we are working with. Important is <clears throat> that we also have an um, interface to ERP SAP, obviously. So we import data from SAP and we export data again, like um, routings, for example. So, and we also have an interface to our BSH um, custom MES platform. And um, yeah, that's also um, one thing. So the results of our process planning will be handed over to the MES. Um, for example, work instructions and the MES platform can visualize the work instructions online at the workstation, which is a result of our planning. <clears throat> and in the future, we also want to have um, some data back from the MES system in order to compare really uh, the plan with the, with, the, with the real data from the shop floor, such as cycle times. Yeah, so let's look at two examples and the two projects I wanted to um, out, outline here. <clears throat> the first one you can see here is a typical assembly uh, workplace in one of our factories. And uh, what, we, what we are doing here is, um, as I said, we have uh, long assembly lines with uh, quite um, some uh, amount of, of stations. So we have to do a detailed uh, MTM time planning. That's the operations basis that we have. We use MTM Tycan for Team Center. It's integrated in the EasyPlan web client running on top of Team Center seamlessly. So the user doesn't really know. Sometimes even he's working on top of Team Center, but he has his specific web client and he does his time analysis using MTM methods. And at the same time, we get from, uh, from Team Center uh, via the product configurator, the variant information. We combine the variant information with our um, operations. And this allows us to do uh, the important job of line balancing. That means the distribution of manual tasks to the stations that determines the output and the productivity of our assembly lines in the end. And the result is the work instruction, which tells, okay, what does the worker has to do for each um, in, at each workstation and for a specific a type of variants or a group of specific variants? So that's that's pretty important, and that's actually what we hand over then to the MES uh, platform, and they have the ability to really tell okay which lot is running on the line and which work instructions uh, can I simultaneously um, visualize on the shop floor. As I said, the, uh, the aggregated data will be exported to ERP SAP system and becomes part of the routings yeah, that we use for controlling, et cetera. So that's what we do. 
uh, for the time management. And last but not least for manual assembly, I, ha I also want to mention that we do a detailed economic analysis using EAWS, another method from MTM, because we have uh, really um, the workforce in Central Europe where we have still most of our factories, age is quite high, so we have to deal with ergonomics quite often. We even use advanced uh, simulation with a motion tracking suit, and we also use uh, Process Simulate Human for human simulation. And there we also have EAWS as a method integrated. Okay, and so uh, the other project uh, running in parallel, as I said, is dealing with the robotics. So uh, as I said, well, we have 42 factories altogether uh, globally in BSH, many of them in, in Europe. Um, we have, as I said, uh, aging workforce. We have to deal with productivity in high cost countries uh, even more than, than maybe in, in others. So um, one of our goals is clearly to have more um, automation. Yeah, to, to really implement more robotics, be it industrial robots or newer types of lightweight robots in our assembly lines. So what we do here is we're using uh, Process Simulate Advanced Robotics Simulation to set up a simulation study in order to validate um, if a certain automation uh, project makes sense. The new thing, though, here is that we have a co cooperation also with uh, RD Mines. It's a German a company based in Karlsruhe. And uh, well, it's a cooperation between Siemens and RD Mines now. And RD Mines developed a plugin for Process Simulate, which allows the engineer to take a certain um, operations from a library, allocate it to a robot, and the robot actually uh, does it automatically. And the uh, in intelligence software writes the specific program for the robot in the background. So. I, as a, as a user, as an engineer, I have to select a specific type, type of robot, like a um, universal robot, a 10 or a KUKA robot whatsoever, Kawasaki. And the software uh, then writes the specific code. And I, as an engineer, I don't have to do that anymore. So we in BSH believe that this software toolchain will help our engineers to do more with robotics on, on their own because we want to foster flexible automation. Today, as many other um, industrial companies, I, I imagine um, when we want to go for automation, we, we hire external partners and integrators, and they sell us the whole project more or less in a black box. They come to our factory, uh, they do everything, the setup, but then later next week, uh, we might have a product change or we might have an optimization project on the shop floor running on. We have to call the external partner again, and they have to change it and so on and so on. We cannot really go into flexible automation. We have a single purpose automation today in BSH. And if we want to raise the number of robots in our factories, we think we have to go for flexibility and therefore we have to do more on our own and we have to enable our engineers to do more on our own and the software will help us. So to give you an example, what we did to test this tool chain, we went into one of our factories. Here it's a, it's in a final assembly line for a gas cooktop. And the, the colleagues over there, they thought already about, okay, how to automating a screwing process. So we looked into the manual task. We set up the entire study and process simulate. And uh, we did the, the feasibility. Uh, is it possible? Will the robot fit into the existing line? Do we meet the cycle times? Do we have an impact on productivity, a positive or not? So that's what we did there. And um, so we have also another project uh, in, a, in a factory nearby where it's more a complex simulation, I would, I would call it. Um, we were looking at um, the um, continuous moving conveyors in a, in a surface treatment area. Actually, uh, one, one conveyor is, is coming out with sheet metal parts hanging uh, on the conveyor. And, uh, and then uh, one worker has to take um, the parts and bring it, and bring it, as you can see on the video, uh, onto another hanger without that the powder actually uh, falls down from the sheet metal parts and it's a, it's a very it's very complicated to be automi automized so um, we used really here advanced simulation and process simulate really helps us to to understand the entire process and today we are um, the project is still running but we are we are sure that it will be possible to be automated so um, and the last example is um, here from a refrigerator factory in southern Germany. 
Um, there, uh, one of the big outcomes of uh, the project is the, is a guideline that you see on the left hand of the slide. So uh, we can give this guideline now to our engineers and they can really do um, several scenarios, studies in process simulate. There you see we have an industrial robot. We have a handover point defined between a human worker and the, and the robot. We can check where the fence has to be. We can check, okay, what can the robot do? What can the human do? So we combine human and robot simulation in one study. And that's one of the, from my point of view, one of the big advantages this process simulate can offer. Yeah, and um, last but not least for Process Simulate, we also use a virtual reality. So we have now integrated in the latest version a VR functionality, and this allows us uh, to really be in one simulation study, although the engineers sit in different locations. We tested it from China to Germany, for example, where colleagues are really totally immersed using a head-mounted display, HTC Vive, in one simulation. They check the study, they can discuss it, and they can do the entire planning together. And imagine, as you can imagine, in times of Corona, where everybody has to sit at home, uh, this is really this is really perfect. And this brings the people uh, into the system, and they, uh, they really want to use it. So we even tested it with an external partner who uh, um, develops the assembly lines or the station for us, and it also works with an external partner. So yeah, as I, I said already, so why are we doing this, right? I mean, it's all about cost, productivity, time, uh, validation in an early phase of, a, of the planning state, obviously. But we really want to empower robotics. We want to get into a position where our engineers deal with robotics more on their own. They, we want to go for flexible automation, uh, like, I, like I said. And I, we think that those are the right tools for the engineers to come into position to be really able to do that. Yeah, so this is uh, these are the benefits as, as you can see on that slide, and um, so the two projects that I have been talking about now: one for the manual classical uh, optimization of assembly, one for the robotics lightweight robots. How do they fit together? So as as you saw, the IT strategy is to have it completely integrated. So um, if you sum it up to one sentence yeah, or bring it down to one sentence. Moving the classical digital factory and their tools onto Team Center, integrating it towards PDM product engineering. That's the key strategy for us. So really reusing the data, the 2D layout, and then design the 3D layout on top of that, and then the support the entire process planning. So you have the different authoring tools, one easy plan and one process simulate, both are authoring tools for processes and operations, yeah? And both processes and operations are uh, be, uh, being stored in the same database and you can use both for a mixed line balancing in the future. So you will have an assembly line uh, with let's say five to 15 robots standing and then you have still 20, 25 workers in one line and you have it mixed and you have to be able to, to deal with the entire system and the dependencies that you have in between of them. So the final uh, slide here is, as I, as, I, as I showed to you, we have our digital factory inside uh, in Team Center. We have the product data, the product variant information, the 3D product data. We have the resources from our external partners, the 3D resources and with its attributes. We're using the resource library. That we use all of this to really define the manufacturing concept to detail the processes, even in a virtual environment, to have an exact plan. We can validate uh, everything, even using advanced technologies such as virtual reality to do that remote uh, with different partners around the globe. So uh, those tools bring us really into position um, to, have, to have all of this. And in the end, uh, develop um, robot programs, define cycle times, work instructions, and have this hand it over to our uh, manufacturing execution system is really the key. So yeah, and uh, final slide, um, this is a lake uh, near one of our biggest fac factories in, in Upper Bavaria. So I wanted to show to you that's, that's what we're actually doing when we're not uh, completely immersed in, in virtual reality, then we are immersed in nature and yeah. So I hope you enjoyed my presentation and thanks for watching and um, have a good day.